Hey guys, Casey here from StartScreenPrintingNow.com and today I wanted to update a video that I made quite a bit back showing you how you can print your color separations from Illustrator without using any RIP software. Since then I've updated to Adobe Creative Cloud and I'm using Windows 10. And my workflow for printing out my films has changed quite a bit so I wanted to share that with you guys. So we'll still kind of be printing from Illustrator which will be kind of exporting our films into Photoshop so that we can get our nice halftone dots and get a nice black film, really dark, uh, printed out every time. Let's get started and I'll show you my new workflow. So right off the bat, I have here an Illustrator file that's all completely vector. It was all created in Illustrator. And right away, you want to double check that your colors in Illustrator are all assigned to spot colors. You can see in the swatches palette that I have down here that each color has their own little dot next to them. This shows you that they're a spot color. When I double click on them, I can see that they're a spot color and not a process color. A process color would be broken up by C, M, Y, K, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. And those colors would be combined to create our color. We don't want that. We want just a spot color for each color in our artwork. I have my registration marks across the top and the bottom, and I have a little key here to let me know which color is which. Now if you don't have RIP software, I would never recommend printing straight from Illustrator to get your films. Printing from Illustrator does not give you the darkest black possible. We really want to be printing from Photoshop. And of course, if you have RIP software, then I would absolutely recommend printing from Illustrator, but I would not recommend watching this video because I'm going to show you how to print without RIP software. So yeah, that's why you're here. We'll be using two free programs to help us get our color separated spot color illustrator document into Photoshop so that we can rasterize, ra rasterize our halftones and then print out really dark black film that we can get on a screen and print on a shirt. The two programs we're going to be downloading are Ghost Script and QD PDF. Ghost Script contains a lot of the framework that helps QD PDF run. First I go to the Ghost Script website and I go down to the download section. I'm going to go down here to the Postscript and PDF Interpreter Renderer section and click on Ghost Script. Then you just choose the platform that you use. I'm using Windows in this case, and I'm going to do a Ghost Script General Public License. We're not using the commercial license for this. You download that, run the installer, and then it goes somewhere. It doesn't matter. It goes into your program files. Who cares? Next, we're going to go to Cute PDF. I called it Cutie PDF earlier. It's just cute. It's not a cutie. And we're going to see here there's Cute PDF Writer. And it's a free download. You don't need to pay for it. There's a professional version, but we don't need that for our purposes. So you download that and install it as well. Everything's really going to take place behind the scenes. So what these two programs have now done is when I go up to File, Print, I now have a new printer in my printer dialog box. I can see my Canon printer, I can print to PDF, but what I'm going to choose now is my new Cute PDF Writer printer. I'm going to make sure my media size is set to usually the size of my film. I'm using 13 by 19 film. And when you choose custom for the medium size, it's going to automatically detect the size of your artboard and set it to that. In my case, it's 13 by 19 again. As you can see here, width 13, height 19. Make sure you have it set up to use the media size that you're going to be printing on. Next, I'm going to go to Output. And I'm going to choose, up here in the mode, I'm going to choose Separations Host Based for my colors. I'm not going to choose in rip Separations. If I choose in rip Separations, it's going to flatten my image. And I won't have all my colors separated, so I can print them out separately on my film. So I choose Separations Host Based. I can go down here and see that it is selecting only my spot colors. And you'll notice my, my white is actually neon pink. I do that just so I can visually see on the screen that it's not the same color as the background of my document. And you can see it has no other process colors selected. No cyan, magenta, yellow, or black. This is what I want. When I hit print, it's going to give us a PDF document 
with each of our spot colors on its own page within a PDF. If you look at my artwork, you'll see that it has gradients, and when we PDF our document, you'll see that those gradients are nice and smooth, but we'll set it up so that those are our raster halftone dots instead of that smooth gradient. I'll go down here to print when I make sure that it's gonna print all the correct spot colors. And this process might take a, like up to a full minute. You might think it's not doing anything after the print dialog box goes away, but you just need to wait and be patient. That took about 30 seconds and the dialog box popped up and it's asking me where I want to save my PDF. I'm just gonna save it to the desktop. And now you, you'll see I have this PDF that I want to right click and open with Adobe Photoshop. When it comes up, you'll see this import PDF dialog box, you'll see each of my colors is on its own little page. There's six colors in my document, so there's six colors here. The image size is 13 by 19 like we wanted. Make sure that you have crop to media box selected. If you have bounding box, it's going to crop it to the actual artwork and not the size of the page. We want it to crop to the media box. I'm going to make sure that anti-alias is unchecked. Anti-alias unchecked. If you have it checked, Photoshop will add gray data between your artwork's line work and the white and it'll add some little gray which will make it kind of fuzzy when you print out your halftones. I'm going to set my resolution to 600 ppi. Mode, select grayscale. Bit depth, 8-bit I think is good. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this first little page here, my first color, and I'm going to hold shift and select all six of my colors. That way, when I say OK, Photoshop's going to open each color in its own document window. You could do this one at a time, open your PDF and select each color one at a time and do that, but I find it's just easier to select them all at once and then say OK. So I'm going to say OK. And as you can see up here, all of my spot colors are on their own tab in separate documents. This would be the black color. If I zoom in here, you can see in my key I have black. This is my green, and as you can see, it got that gradient in there. So let's work with this one right here. This is my yellow spot color. Lots of gradients in this. I want to turn those into halftones that will print out nice on my film. So what I do first is I go up to Image, Mode, Bitmap, say OK to flatten layers, leave my output at 600 ppi, make sure that the method used is halftone screen, say OK, now with your halftone screen LPI frequency, it might differ depending on your needs. You might be able to print at a really, really high frequency like 70 to 90 to get really small halftone dots. Personally, I like to print at 45 so I get really big halftone dots because I like to see them. The angle, we're not really going to worry about that here, but we need to make sure we choose ellipse for the shape. I say OK. And now, as you can see, it turned our gradient into halftone dots. If I zoom in here, you'll see it's a gradual pattern of halftone dots. Now we're ready to print this spot color to our film. I'm going to go to File, Print. Right now my film printer is chosen. I'm using a Canon Pixma IX6820. So I choose that as my printer. I'm going to go to Print Settings. I'm going to make sure my printer paper size is my film size, which is 13 by 19 in this case. I'm going to choose borderless printing, grayscale, choose matte photo paper as my media type. Other people might suggest using like a glossy photo paper as your media type, but I find I get a little bit darker films if I use matte photo paper. And an important thing, you need to make sure you have high print quality selected. Make sure high is selected. Then I just hit OK. And then I just hit print. So now my printer is going to print out really dark films that I can burn on my screen. It's going to print all my halftone dots and I did it all without using a rip. I'll go through those same steps with each of my colors doing the halftone dots and then printing them separately. And while this might not be as fast as printing directly from Illustrator using a RIP program like AccuRIP or Waysatch, it is completely free and only takes a little bit of time, a little bit of work. And once you get doing this, it won't take any time at all. You won't even notice it really. So guys, that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like the channel, subscribe 
and uh, share this video with your mom. But until then, keep on printing, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.